Hey, I'm Eric Gregory, and I'm a technical content writer at Mirantis. Today I'm talking, hopefully quickly enough, about reducing container image size. The talk is focused on cloud-native beginners, but by the end we'll get into some more advanced approaches to tiny workloads. So first, why does this matter? Smaller images reduce time to build, important for CI, and time to pull, which is important when spinning up a new node in a production environment. Improved performance and utilization drive sustainability, and performance enhancements are particularly impactful on power-efficient hardware. Finally, minimal base images reduce attack surface and defends against, defend against privilege escalation attacks. So here we've got four approaches to a simple HTTP server written in Go. First, the default Debian-based Go 1.21 image with a single stage build This clocks in at 301 megabytes. Next, a single stage build on the Alpine-based Go image. If you're not sure what that means, I'll explain in a moment, but this takes us down to 85 megabytes. Third is a statically linked binary wrapped in the scratch base image. This gets down to four megabytes. Last is a WebAssembly module that can run on Kubernetes at way under a megabyte. We'll come back to that at the end. So to understand the differences, let's review the structure of a container. At the bottom is the OS kernel, which is shared with the host machine. Everything above this point is part of our image. That's going to include our application, but also language runtimes, dependencies, libraries, etc. This middle layer can really add up. Now, our goal isn't to get the smallest possible image at any cost, but to cultivate standard repeatable practices that tend to give us smaller images while respecting other priorities like time and maintainability. So, as always, context is everything. Here's the Docker file that gave us our Debian-based image. We're building and running from the same base image, and since we're trying to do two jobs with one tool, we need a bunch of build time dependencies that we don't need at runtime. We've also got a shell, curl, apt, and so on. As a rule, we don't want to include stuff we don't need. The Golang project has made this easy for us with a Golang image built on a slimmer base image called Alpine. Alpine Linux is designed to be a slim foundation for environments like containers, and it does so by clearing out everything that doesn't spark joy and leaving a package manager so you can download the stuff you really need. The only thing I've changed in this Docker file is the base image. We can swap out our base image with Golang Alpine and reduce the size by more than two thirds. Just that simple step. This image uses muscle libc rather than glibc, and that can be an issue in some cases, but that's a good reminder that we need to be thinking about what we actually need in a base image. So here we have the start of a first good practice. Prefer the most minimal, minimal base image that fits your requirements. Sometimes you'll need lots of tools and dependencies, especially when containerizing existing applications. But try to find the minimum that works. Where possible, try to use consistent base image distros across different applications so you can have consistent base layers across your images. When we use the Alpine base image for a dedicated runtime container, we can get down to about seven megabytes. But Alpine isn't our only choice of base image. Distroless tidies up even more and removes things like the shell and package manager. There are a number of variants that let you get really granular on things like including or excluding glibc or libssl. Scratch is an explicitly empty base image, good for standalone binaries. Note that it's really and truly empty, so you'll have to account for things like certs and users and time zone info, and you won't be able to build inside a Scratch base image since there's nothing to build with. Which brings us to our second practice. Multi-stage builds. In the top half of this Docker file, we're using the big Debian base image to build our binary, and then in the bottom half, copying it over to a new runtime image built from Scratch. This is most pertinent to compiled languages like Go, but even containerized Python, Python apps might use multi-stage builds with tools like PEX. For Windows containers, Microsoft provides four base images ranging from the 3.4 gig Windows image that includes the complete Windows API set, down to the 100 odd megabyte nano server image tailored to new applications, microservers, and apps with minimal dependencies. We can take advantage of multi-stage builds here as well, for example, building from a Golang nano server image and then running from baseline nano server. Finally, let's look forward to an emerging approach, WebAssembly, also known as WASM. WebAssembly is a low-level binary code format enabling small, fast, and portable workloads. Projects like Run WASI are making it more and more practical to run WebAssembly workloads on Kubernetes. The K0's Kubernetes distro makes it easy to experiment with runtime plugins, not just for WebAssembly, but also things like Gvisor. When the kubelet gets a request for a workload with a particular runtime requirement, it passes on that information to container D, which can then select the appropriate low-level runtime, which might be run C for an ordinary container, or in this case, wasm time spin for WebAssembly. Once you have the environment up and running, building an image for a simple app doesn't have to be a whole lot more complicated. In essence, we're compiling the bytecode and then plopping that down in an empty OCI-compatible scratch shell of a container. Then the WebAssembly runtime handles the job of running that code against the wasm virtual architecture. So practice three is look out for new approaches. 
finally, if you'd like to check out a detailed tutorial on using WebAssembly on K0s or look through the Docker files from this presentation, this QR code will take you to a page where you can find all of that. Thank you so much for your time. Keep it tiny, keep it safe. Have a great KubeCon.